We are talking about pray, faith and prayer. Making a prayer of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. This is where God wants to bless us. God always wants us to, pro want to provide for us. But God wants us to depart from prayer of recitation and repetitions. And we have a heart to heart talk with him. So Jesus said in Matthew 6 verse 7, When you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes you feel, I need to speak this 20, 20 times so that God, God will hear me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus said in Matthew 6, 8, Be not you therefore I come to them. Remember what I said. Jesus was not against repetition. He was against vain, unproductive, useless repetitions which are from the mind and not from the heart. And I'll show you repetition is not bad. There is a repetition which is out of conviction. Hallelujah. The one you keep on going to God about something until you get a break, until God says, okay, I am going to do it. So, God is not against repetitions. He is against vain repetitions. And vain repetitions are the things you... They are things you speak from your mind over and over and your heart is not there. They have become laws in you. Laws, law, sharia. It becomes rules. That whenever I go to pray, I must begin this way. That's a rule. Amen? Do your children have such a formula? Whenever I want to go to daddy, I must begin this way. When my children come, they, have, they will come this way, another time they will come this way as their hearts. And they, and they have confidence that the Father will hear them. Hallelujah. Amen. What am I trying to say? Therefore, pray knowing and believing that your Father in heaven knows what you need and is willing to do it. That is faith. Praying knowing that your Father in heaven knows what you need and is willing to do it for you. We saw the prodigal son when he said, Father, give me inheritance, my inheritance. He went there with confidence. And the father said, okay, I give to you and he gave to him. That is faith. Hallelujah. Amen. But remember, you need character to use what God gives you. You need integrity. Hallelujah. Amen. So only prayer of faith praises God and brings an answer. It's only prayer of faith that avails what you are praying about. Because if it is not without, if it is without faith, you have wasted a lot of your time. Hallelujah. Amen. You can pray the whole day. And the whole day is over. And you think, oh wow, I've already to me omba. Hey, we have prayed. Hey, we have prayed. But it's all useless. There's nothing that has come out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The heart must be in God as we pray. We should draw to God in our hearts as we speak with our mouths. As we speak with our mouth, our hearts are closely knit with the Holy Spirit. 
This is a prayer that God hears. It's a prayer that availed much. And especially when the heart is full of the word of God. It is full of the will of God. The word of God is the will of God. God has expressed his will through his word. Are we together, somebody? That's why you must know the word of God. What has God said about the thing you are seeking him for? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your will must be submitted to the will of God. There was a time when we were young Christians, those early 1990s. I had I had this story where we were taught about craving. People are talked about craving things. So you see somebody's car. I say, God, I crave this car in the name of Jesus. I crave it. Not even Kwitisha. I crave it. Now I die. It's not your car. But because you are taught how children of Israel went to Canaan and took the Lord. Now he is exercising what by craving. I can tell you for sure that was sin. Because it's covetousness. There are prayers you can pray which are covetousness and it's sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So you must fully fill your, your heart with the word of God. So prayer of faith is spread from the heart. It is, it, and your heart is acknowledge, is knowledgeable. And acknowledges God's ability to do what you are requesting. Let me repeat that again. You know the word of God. You are knowledgeable of the word of God. And so when you are coming to God, you have this assurance. And you acknowledge there is this confirmation in your heart that God is able to do what you are requesting. Hallelujah. That is faith. I'm saying that is faith. Amen. Amen. Have you ever prayed for something and you're not convinced God can do it? It's to you is such a big mountain. Even as you are praying, you're not convicted that it shall be done. That is not a prayer of faith. What am I saying? You are heart through knowledge and believing agrees with God that he is able to do what you are asking with your mouth. Did you hear what I said? Hallelujah. You are heart through knowledge and believing agrees with God that he is able to do what you are asking with your mouth. That is, your heart bears witness with your mouth on God's will and ability to perform anything that you needed. Hallelujah. Whatever you find you are speaking before God, but your heart is not, con is not convicted. Hallelujah. Your heart is not bearing witness to what you are saying. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to evaluate your prayer life. Have you ever been in such a situation? You are speaking, but your heart is not bearing witness of what you are saying. You know, Pastor said, Pastor said, we pray for the nation. Hallelujah. Glory. Father, yes, Father. But you are speaking, but your, your heart is not bearing witness. Hallelujah. With your mouth on God's will. And this mostly happens when you don't have the word of God in our hearts. Because the word of God in your heart should be the same word of God in your mouth. 
So your heart bears witness with your mouth on God's will and ability to perform anything that you ask. Are you together, somebody? What are you saying? A prayer of faith is a heartfelt prayer. The Bible says in James 5.16 The fervent, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Hallelujah. The effectual heartfelt prayer of a righteous man produces, brings much. Hallelujah. Amen. That tells us we must be a people of meditation. We don't become a people who read the Bible on Sunday. There are people who take attention and get interest to read the word of God and meditate on it. That's what God told Joshua in Joshua 1 8 that this book of the law should not depart from your mouth. And how do you ensure that? By meditating it day and night that you may do what it says. When you speak before me, you are speaking according to my will. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. There are some prayers people used to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of knowledge. They are saying, I bite you devil. I put you on the railway line. And I call the railway line. The railway train to come and, and destroy you. Can you can a train destroy a spirit? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you getting me somebody? Because of lack of knowledge, we can pray many prayers that do not make sense. I kill you, devil. From today, I kill you and I take you to the grave. <laughs> Somebody's praying. But let me ask you, can you kill a spirit? And take him to the to the grave. When did we learn that from the Bible? So when we don't have the word of God, we have imaginations of the world. When we fail to deposit the word of God in our hearts, we will pray vain, useless, repetition prayers. Full of many words. And the expression in English that we learned from novels. Never to resume of it. Hallelujah. So meditation of the word of God deposits the word of God in your hearts. Creates and activates and grows your faith. Hallelujah. So that the word in your mouth corresponds with the word in your heart. We should speak from the overflow of our hearts. Even when you are praying to God, a heartfelt prayer is a prayer that comes from the overflow of your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. That's why God will give a burden to a prophet. He has it in his heart. Hallelujah. Without a burden in our hearts, we cannot have effective prayer. We will pray, but they're not effective. There's no burden in our hearts. And the burden God would put in a prophet is putting a word, his word in the prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. Today I'm going very slowly. Amen. Because I would want us to get all things God has said are ours. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Amen. An empty heart. 
and heart full of wordiness cannot feed the mouth with the word needed for prayer of faith. I said, an empty heart or a heart that is filled with the wordiness cannot feed the mouth with the word needed to make a prayer of faith. Because all we will go to God is worldly expressions. Hallelujah. We will go the way people of the world go. Even we will imagine that God has to hear me. I have to pray through somebody else and not Jesus. But I know the word of God. What has God said in coming to him? Hallelujah. So when we are empty in our hearts, it leaves the mind to nominate and make raving repetitions. Are we together, somebody? So as we pray with our mouth and our minds are in something else. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. At that time, my mind is in Ikosoko, it's in the market. Or that time my mind is in the workplace. That my, my mind is about that lad that I was buying. But I'm praying, Father, in the name of Jesus. Even sometimes you find you say words that you are not sure what you say. Is. And people laugh and say, Apa me say manini. Well, what has he said? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he is praying with the mouth, but the mind is far. He is the mother, I say, yeah. I'm praying, Father, in the, but I'm remembering, I've not bought, bought onions for, for lunch. I've not bought. So my mind is in the market. I'm even seeing the skooma. I'm even seeing the tomatoes. But I'm praying here, Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. I'm not, here, here, I don't have people who pray that way. I can see here we know how to pray. A prayer of faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So what am I saying? Faith is a matter of the heart. It's a heart matter. You cannot speak what you don't have in your heart. Glory to God. You cannot bring it to God. Because you don't have it. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 12, 34. How old generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I want you to look at that. Out of the abundance of the heart. So if you have so much of the world in your heart, even in your prayers, you'll be full of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And that's why God had to warn Joshua. Meditate on this word day and night. And let this word be in your mouth. So shall you prosper and have good success. In other words, your success in prayer is based on your meditation and faith. Did you hear what I said? Your success in prayer Expect on your meditations and faith. Hallelujah. Amen. You know these things I'm saying because in my young Christian life, and sometimes tempting when, when you pray and your, your mind is far. Your mind is far. Are you ever praying something that has been troubling you? You are not at peace. And then you go to pray. You are talking to God, but what is coming to your mind is that thing that you've been thinking about so much. The power of meditation. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The power of meditation. Glory to God. Amen. What you've been meditating is what will come to your mind. So if the things I'm passing through is what I'm thinking so much about, even when I'm praying, I'm just, my mind is just in the office, but I'm praying here. I'm here praying, but my mind is in the workplace. Because that is what is troubling me. 
or my mother is with my family. That is what troubling me. It is not with God. Hallelujah. That's why my first time changed our meditation by giving time for, for God and for the world. Listen, when you speak to God, we bring to him the treasures of our hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you speak with God, have you ever gone to sat our wife, our, our somebody's wife? Have you gone to somebody's wife? You need something from the husband. And there are people who say, send another woman to the wife. I say, go and talk to the wife. Let, so that the wife can talk to her husband. But when you come to the wife, after saying what you needed, the wife tells you, that, that cannot happen. I know he'll not do it for you. But then you think, ah, you are stopping even when you have become, you have become the hindrance now. You are becoming the hindrance. But look at it carefully. He, ans he answers you. And then you decide to go straight to the man. They have not talked. You talk to the man. And what the wife said is the same thing the husband said. What, I, what, what is that? The wife has learned to understand what the husband loves and has learned to understand how he does things and his will. Are you getting me somebody? And there are things you will say and say, that's alright. And that's when we learn about our, our, our Lord. We will be in a question to know this is what he wants done at this hour. And you'll be able to pray the right prayers. Hallelujah. So what we speak to God, we bring it from the treasures of our hearts. We bring it from the treasures of our hearts to him. What you've been storing becomes evident in our prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 12, 35. Jesus said, A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Are you seeing that? From your treasure. You cannot be what you are not in your heart. But sometimes we make pretense hypocritical, insincere, faithless prayers. Let me repeat it again. And please love me. Even as I say those words. Amen? Sometimes we may make pretense, hypocritical, insincere, faithless prayers. We speak from our minds good things to God while our hearts are full of other things. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know what? The Bible says God looks at the heart. God tests the heart. God tries the heart of a man. Whatever you are speaking to him, God, there is a language God hears more clearly. It's not only the words you are speaking. It's the words you are speaking in the mouth, in your heart, sorry. One day, the days of Sarah and Abraham, God visited them. And the Abraham made a calf. He slaughtered that calf, he made some cakes. And after, after the three angels ate, who they represented Trinity, three people, three men. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and he was told, Sarah will have a child. Sarah was behind the tent. And, and the Bible says, 
Sarah laughed. And he was asked, why did you laugh? Sarah said, I have not laughed. Was she lying? Was she lying? Sarah may not have laughed with the mouth. <laughs> she laughed in her heart. I check her nanny. She not even laugh with a sound. But God hears prayers even you don't produce any word. And so sometimes make hypocritical prayers. Where you, what you are speaking is so different from what you are saying in your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You are saying something different. What God hears is the language of your heart. The language of heaven, even if you are speaking with your mouth, God is moved by what you are speaking in your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You are sharing your name to an akupatiya kitu, but it's casting you say, "Aki ona chukua." Like with, ah, you are very good. You are very good. You are very good, my friend, my brother. Ah, me na kupenda. You are always good. You know. But inside you say, "Ki ki menya." Oh, Hallelujah. God sees what you are saying in your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. There are curses we say in our hearts sometimes. Amen. You have not spoken a word. Amen. But someone has gone away in your traffic. Yes. 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 He has offended you in the traffic. Amen. And then you speak a word in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. God hears that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hypocritical prayers. Amen. God wants sincere prayers. And the Bible says two men went to pray. Jesus gave this example of this parable. And there was, there was a tax collector and a Pharisee. Pharisee went to the front of the, of the tabernacle, of the temple, there in the front. But the tax collector could not even go. He went behind. The Pharisee lifted his hands and looked up. The tax collector looked down. He could not even look up. And the Pharisee began to pray. God, you know I'm good. I pay my tithes. I fast twice a week. I help people. God, you see, I'm not like this fellow here. I'm not like the sinners. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's the same people Jesus said. They go in the marketplace with wrong lobes. And they make repetitive, repetitive prayers to be heard. So that people may hear. Hallelujah. Then the tax collector. Who was hated. People saw him as a sinner. He bound before God. I say, God, I am a sinner. Have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. He could not, Bible says, he could not even look up. He said, God, have mercy. I'm not even worthy. Hallelujah. Jesus asked, out of those two people, they both made prayers. They both prayed. The Bible says, who came out of that place having been justified? The Bible says, the one who was a sinner as a sinner came out of that place justified because he was praying a sincere prayer. But the Pharisee was praying hypocritical prayers. The Bible, Jesus talked about so much about, about, about the Pharisees. He said they wash their cup from the outside. But they don't wash in the inside. They are full of extortions. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. But now their mouth is speaking great things. If you are there listening to their prayers, oh, you will say, that guy, Pharisee, he has prayed. Ah, oh, we are going to Messiah. He gives the tithes, his prayer. Ah, that, 
That guy, God has had him. Hallelujah. But the one who bowed did not even want to be heard by anyone. God had him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what am I saying? It is important. Glory to God. To be sincere before God. Talk from the heart. Don't be a hypocrite. God will see it. And you'll hate your prayers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's like we are praying with you. And I've offended you. And you have not told me. Ah, it's okay. Yeah. And inside, you are full of, you are feeling like you are going to punch me. But you are smiling at me. And you are holding hands praying with you. And inside, you are full of bitterness. That is insincere. Be open. Tell this person, you know, you offended me. Because the prayers you are praying together will be all useless. Because God is looking at the, the heart of the two people. There is a strife. And when they strive, God is not there. You'll be lying. The devil will instead come in between them. Are you together, somebody? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer of faith is not hypocritical prayers. We must be sincere. If you are to see results, we must be sincere. And be open. That's why James says, confess your faults to one another. And pray for one another. Confess your faults. You are trespassed against one another. And pray for one another. If you do this, then he says, the prayer of faith. And they will save the sick. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you see the, want to see the power of God, we must walk in the sincerity of hearts. We must come knowing, even if we don't open our hearts, God is seeing an open heart. There is a candle of God that lights us inside of us. There is a candle. The Bible says, your spirit is a candle of the Lord that searches the inward parts. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You cannot pray, make a prayer of faith in insincerity and pretense. Hallelujah. And this is where many Christians have to watch. Because we miss out on this, on what God wants to give us on this. God bless you. We shall continue. And I will talk about sustained prayer of faith. Amen. God bless you.